Technology is changing at a rapid pace, and our warfare is also evolving along similar lines across the globe. Our threats today are far more technologically advanced, relatively low cost, small scale, and can be extremely lethal. The threat could be something as inexpensive as a drone, and taking them down with some of the costliest missiles might not be the best strategy which means military technology needs to go the extra mile if there is another world war. What if we told you that we have bullets that can self-steer? Or what if we can completely get rid of missiles with laser technology? If that caught your attention, stick around till the end of the video to find out a lot more about the world's most compact mobile hydraulic systems in a robot. Self-steering bullets. Nobody would have ever thought that a self-steering bullet would become a reality, but DARPA showed us that it is possible. The way this ammunition works is still a secret though, and that's totally understandable. A video put out by DARPA shows the bullet adjusting its trajectory to hit a moving target. This bullet is called the Extreme Accuracy Task Ordnance, or Exacto. The .5 caliber bullet was meant to be used in areas such as Afghanistan, where visibility and changes in weather can make things quite difficult for the military, because these conditions can throw bullets slightly off course. This bullet might also make sense in long-range combat and also in places where the weather can interfere with the sniper's accuracy. Maybe with this new bullet, even a novice shooter using a system similar to what we have here for the very first time will be able to hit a moving target. This simply means that you don't even have to be good at shooting to hit the mark. The goal of the Exacto program was always to give shooters accuracy at greater distances, engaging targets a lot sooner, and enhancing the safety of the military troops, all thanks to new approaches and advanced capabilities to improve the range and accuracy of sniper systems beyond the current state of art. The bigger picture of the self-steering bullet would be the fact that DARPA wants to make sure that the American military has a weapon that can do what others can't. AAV-7 Amphibious Assault Vehicle Amphibious vehicles might have been around for quite some time now, but what makes the AAV-7 special would be its expeditionary capabilities, because no other equipment better defines the distinction and purpose of the Marine Corps than the AAV-7 Amphibious Assault Vehicle. The AAV-P-7A1 is an armored assault amphibious full-tracked landing vehicle, this vehicle carries troops in water operations from ship to shore, through rough water surface and surf zones. It also carries troops to inland objectives after a shore. This vehicle is purpose-built to assault any shoreline from the well decks of Navy assault ships. Amphibious assault vehicles are generally extremely mobile armored amphibious vehicles that transport Marines and cargo to and through a hostile territory. So it makes a lot of sense why countries want to invest in these vehicles. <laughs> military e-bikes Let's face it, motorcycles are loud and the military needs to be discreet with their operations. Today, all thanks to Tesla, we get to see several startups with their own EVs, and most of them focus on electric bikes and motorcycles. This growing popularity of e-bikes has caught the attention of several armies worldwide, and for good reasons. The military might want to use these bikes because, first of all, they are green, but most importantly, they make no noise. E-bikes allow soldiers to move quietly for miles, and today at least six armies use these vehicles worldwide, including the Ukrainian Armored Force. These vehicles are set to carve out a niche as quiet, go-anywhere scout vehicles, which will enable troops to sneak and peek while avoiding detection. So e-bikes make a lot of sense for reconnaissance and special operations forces. Did we forget to mention that e-bikes can be extremely portable? Yes, that's true. So there are no reasons why the military should not be considering these vehicles. But the only problem would be charging them. But we think that will be fixed very soon with swappable batteries, because a war zone is not the best place to have EV charging stations. Heads-up display in helmets Even with our technology progressing at unprecedented rate, military helmets have not changed much over the years. At least, nothing very significant. 
But with the integration of heads-up displays, thanks to augmented reality, things are about to change. Augmented reality helmets will give the military a better view of the terrain with more information all at once, which also helps with mission training. With augmented reality, holographic images that are quite realistic are now possible, as it can also be created from the existing data, because today we generate massive amounts of data, and that can be put to good use by the military. Helmets with heads-up displays aided by augmented reality will change the game for the military because now they have access to a lot of information right in front of their eyes and will give the military an upper hand when it comes to the next world war. But this technology still needs a lot of development because augmented reality on a large scale is still in its infancy. Human Universal Load Carrier HULC. We as human beings always try to overcome our physical inabilities with the help of machines and this time we are taking it to the cyborg level. The military could use an exoskeleton to carry heavy equipment, maybe not something as advanced as the Iron Man suit of Tony Stark, but a simplified version of an exoskeleton that already exists today. If this is your first time hearing about exoskeletons, well, these are devices that are placed on the user's body to augment, reinforce, and restore human performance. Exoskeletons can be made from different materials like carbon fiber, metal, soft and elastic parts, and so much more. Exoskeletons help prevent musculoskeletal disorders in workers that cost companies billions each year, and this technology can also be used by the military especially for carrying heavy things. It would also reduce so many issues like back pain and shoulder pain because an exoskeleton simply transfers the weight of the user's arms from the shoulders, neck, and upper body to the body core, which will then reduce physical stress. But most of the exoskeletons that will be used by the military will have some sort of power actuation and assistance, which are still flawed in so many ways. There are non-traditional power solutions that use compressed air. Unlike powered exoskeletons, these exoskeletons will increase the strength and provide stability through human-guided flexion or extension and a locking mechanism. Rigid exoskeletons can result in stress and fatigue due to their weight and unnatural movement of the entire system. But then, technology is always improving, and rigid exoskeletons will also improve over time. Considering the fact that the benefits of exoskeletons include increased efficiency and productivity, and these can also be used instead of industrial robots, which will then eliminate the need for autonomous devices in the military for now. Atlas The Atlas Disaster Response Robot, built by Boston Dynamics, made its public debut way back on July 11, 2013. This robot was developed for DARPA, and it is capable of several natural movements. Atlas was originally created to participate in the DARPA Robotics Challenge, a competition that is intended to speed up the development of advanced robotic hardware, sensors, softwares, and control interfaces, so that soon, robots will be helping humans to respond to future natural and man-made disasters. As of now, Atlas's advanced control system and state-of-art hardware gives the robot power and balance to demonstrate human-level agility. It's extremely lightweight, all thanks to the 3D printed parts. A future where robots might take over the battlefield is not far away, because human life is extremely precious, and we don't want to lose any more human lives in war because we've already lost too many. Laser Weapon System Modern tech-driven warfare might still have a lot of surprises for us, and one such surprise would be laser weapons that are changing the way the military operates. In 2017, the U.S. military detected an unusual threat, which was a small quadcopter drone, the kind of drone that anybody can buy online for $200. But here's the catch. A $3 million Patriot missile was fired to take it down, eliminating the threat. Okay, so what's the problem here? The threat is eliminated, right? Well, when you look at the cost of eliminating the threat, a $3 million missile was used to bring down a $200 drone. This does not simply make sense from an economic point of view. This led to the rise of laser-powered weapon systems. Today, global threats are technologically advanced, 
So directed energy and laser weapon systems are now effectively addressing tech-driven threats more accurately with better flexibility and affordable performance when compared to traditional ballistics. These are designed to be precise, to yield minimal collateral damage, and you don't even need to have ammunition, because as long as you have power, you can shoot. And that is one huge major selling point for these laser-based equipments, especially if the military needs to take a large number of low-cost threats, like a swarm of drones, each carrying some kind of explosive. With all the technological advancements, we clearly don't want to have war. But our threats are far more technologically advanced, so it's safe to have some level of defense systems in place in case things go out of control. War is never a pleasant thing, and people who participate in war don't even want to be there in the first place. Innocent people die, and that cannot be tolerated as human life is a lot more precious than anything we have right now.